good day, fellow investors. Welcome to this live Q&A session with Real Vision Finance. I thank them for hosting me on their uh, channel. And let's start immediately with the topic. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Sven Karlin. I used to be a finance teacher, accounting teacher at the University of Amsterdam, but a few years ago I started doing YouTube and uh, I left my job since then. And now I focus on market research, business research. I analyze, analyze businesses, write reports on them, and I usually analyze them from a long-term perspective. So I look, all right, will there be a recession? What kind of a recession will be? And in that sphere, I would love to discuss and give you a different contrarian opinion on what might happen. Everybody is expecting a recession and a stock market crash. However, it might be of a diff different magnitude that the, than the 2009 benchmark. Everybody's looking at what happened in 2009 and expected, expecting it to repeat itself. Also, with stock market crashes, everybody's looking at 2002, 50% down, 2009, 50% down, and expect that that will replicate itself. However, I'm going to say it, this time it might be different because we have now policymakers from central banks, from governments with huge fiscal deficits, ready to intervene at any sign of trouble. So those expecting a recession might not actually see the recession they expect. And therefore, because we have monetary policy one, monetary policy two, to, and everybody's ready to use monetary policy free, simply putting money into the system. When it comes to investing, then if we go to Samuelson, the stock market usually predicts nine out of the five coming recessions. With the intervention, interventionist economy, the stock market might predict nine out of the following two recessions because every recession is will try to be managed. And that's also what I'm thinking. Okay, everybody expects a recession. It might not be in the form everybody is expecting it. With money coming into the system, even more money, stocks might not go down. Actually, stocks might go up. The economy might still be with low unemployment. Uh, spending might still be high. Credit might still be high. There might not be a credit crunch like we have seen in 2009. So those that time a recession, go into gold, those that sell their stocks, go into bonds, especially long-term bonds, when inflation is actually man-made produced, th those people might be very, very negatively surprised. And given that the majority, especially on YouTube, expects something like that, I really wish to give you a contrarian uh, view and opinion. So. That was the introduction. Let me immediately start with your questions and uh, comments, and uh, let's see if I can answer them. And then you see how you, how your portfolio, your investing styles might fit the upcoming possibilities, risk, and reward. So I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you for joining, and let's make this a fun interview. So let me see about the questions. Thank you, Francisco. All right, Jackie, thank you. Should software engineers worry about a recession? Uh, well, software engineers, those are always in high demand, so you should not worry about your job. Nine out of two. So the stock market, as Samuelson would say, predicts nine recessions. We have seen stocks go down in 2015, 2016, especially commodity stocks. In January of 2016, it was the big low, but then nothing happened. And those that sold stocks actually were the losers. And in 2015, also the situation wasn't that good. The S&P 500 is up 50% since then. So the stock market predicted the recession, the recession didn't happen. And that's usually, the case. So let's see if other questions. Thank you for the comments. Will go up? Will gold go up during the recession? Well, that depends on gold. Uh, gold is not something that has fundamental value. It doesn't give you a dividend. It doesn't grow. It's just a store of value in relation to inflation. If there is inflation, then 
gold might go up. If it isn't already overvalued, gold spiked from 1100 to 1500 in the expectations of the next recession. So if we have a mild recession without inflation, without too much money printing, gold might actually underperform other asset classes like stocks. So it at 1100 gold was less risky than it is now. So next question, Adam, with further monetary policies, this has to result in inflation. No. How can one hedge against recession safely? Gold, maybe. Okay. What sectors are you most familiar with, Sven? Commodities sectors, businesses, utilities, emerging markets. Fed was not cutting rates on 2016. Okay. Where to invest gold properties or Bitcoin? Unfunded liabilities, US, United States. So the liabilities are an ex excellent sit situation to explain to this. US government budget deficit is about 22, 23 trillion, 24 as I speak perhaps. Then we have all the unfunded Medicare healthcare liabilities that bring it up to 50 trillions, trillions, not billions. And now the thing is to finance that, to refinance that, to make it easier for the government to, let's say, deal with that debt, it's always nice to have inflation. Therefore, everybody has the target of 2% inflation. It doesn't affect the market, but it helps governments 2% compound over the long term. It helps them refinance and it helps them work on their debt because as prices go up, government revenues go up, but the debt is usually US government six years. So there is a lag between the revenues increasing and the repayment of the debt. So everybody is trying to do to put that inflation, but control it. Higher inflation is not good. Lower deflation is not good. So 2% is, let's say, the behavioral perception that everybody likes. And now they are trying, going to, they say they will manage it. They say they have the tools to manage inflation that they didn't have, let's say, in the 1970s. But that is always a risk. You never know when inflation will spike up or they will lose control. And then when it comes to gold, I think it has already been a hedge over the last few months. So the key is there to rebalance. You decide, OK, I'll have 10% of my portfolio in gold. When it spikes up like it did now, you might want to rebalance and buy other things that are undervalued. Because being too long in gold, the same happened in 2011. Those that were long gold at high levels lost a lot of money from 2011 till now, let's say. So it's a risky bet. Thank you for a lot of comments here. I see we'll have a lot to discuss. So let me go back to the comments. We discussed the trillions in debt. If bonds are in a bubble, then rates eventually will need to rise. Rates will rise if there is inflation. If the Fed loses control, if we if we lose faith in the currency, and if the currency cannot buy you what you used to be expected to buy something. So it is a thing of perception. If we all start saving because interest rates are lower, like it happened in Japan, then Actually, we might miss on inflation. We might see even lower yields on those bonds if everybody's rushing towards bonds. So it's about capital flows. And it's a question really difficult to answer because nobody actually knows what will happen there. We can try to look smart by saying this or that, but it's actually uncharted territories. Uh, nobody has tested it over a few times and then anything can happen. That's the answer. It can go up. It can go low low. When it comes to investing in bonds, the risks are high. If you see the long-term yield go back to 5%, you lose a lot of money in the short term. If it goes lower, you make some money, the yield goes lower. But let's say the risk is high and the reward is not that big. So it's not my kind of investment. How likely is a currency crisis for the US and another Western countries? The currency crisis for the US and Western countries, that's again how you look at it. I would say there is already a currency crisis because if I look at real estate prices, if I look at stock prices, stock market prices, the S&P 500 is now at 
2000, for almost 3,000 points. It was 10 years ago at 2008, 11 years ago, it was at 1,400 points. So it doubled. If you need to make money in a currency to save for your retirement, now your retirement is twice as expensive as it was in 2007 or 8, or four times as expensive as it was in 2009. Try to buy a home in a sought after area, I'm talking Amsterdam, New York, Paris, London, prices are sky high and have really increased over the last 10, 15 years. So from that perspective and home retirement are the largest costs when it comes to us normal people, even if inflation doesn't measure it. So it's really, really already there. It depends how you measure it. And I think they are going to lower the value of those currencies to make it easier for them to refinance the debt, to pay their obligations. And that's something that has happened since the Roman Empire. Uh, the silver in their coins was constantly lower, lower, and lower, and lower because it made easier, made easier to do business, to flood the money, and to have inflation. So my answer is yes, currencies will be sacrificed sooner or later. Jackie Chan, thank you, Jackie Chan. But raising bond rates will bankrupt many companies, depending on what's going on. If they put money, monetary policy free, directly into companies, so monetary policy one, we lower interest rates to help the economy. We have seen 10 years of low interest rates, so that has a limit. You cannot lower interest rates anymore. Monetary policy two, you put money into the system, you lend it to banks, financial in institutions, that usually transfer to capital markets and push the asset of price, prices, asset prices higher, home prices, stock prices. That has also a limit because it doesn't go into the business, it doesn't go into crediting the economy. So now monetary policy free, let's say a company goes bankrupt, let's put a trillion into that company of made up money, make it not go bankrupt, keep the employers, keep the, let's say, no unfair market situation, unfair market uh, competitiveness, but you save the jobs, you save the economy, everything goes on as it was, and you have a lot of bailouts. So might not happen depending on the company, depending on the, what the companies are doing. And you see now in Europe, many companies are borrowing at negative rates. So I would call that also bailouts because that's not logical and that's, that's not natural. So we, it depends on what kind of an intervention we'll have in the markets. Sven, how much did you get that book? Poor Charlie. I don't know. It was 80 bucks on, uh, on Amazon. I'll be doing a review of that book already started on my channel. So if you fancy that, it's a really amazing book for the investing mindset. How close is China's banking system nearing collapse? News of banks, bailouts, and loan defaults are starting to leak out of China. You said it, bank bailouts. So the government is really intervening, printing the money, devaluating the currency. So protecting what they can protect with their own currency. And therefore, yes, it's a bailout. I hope you're not invested in Chinese banks but they are trying to keep the system as is. It will be ups and downs, but you see that every government is intervening. The US has a, a trillion of budget deficits per year. That's intervention into the system. Uh, low interest rates in Europe, China giving money to the system. So that is how uh, things work today. And that's something, that's also the main message of my contrarian view, let's say, that there is intervention and therefore we might lose by timing the market. We might, might do so much better, but actually being long, long assets, riskier assets. XRP, I don't know how it will perform. So Lorenzo Iris, since micro small caps are undervalued compared to large caps, does this give us an, any margin of safety if recession would happen? I think it does, not only micro caps or small caps, because it's a relative undervaluation. I think that if you go to emerging markets, if you look around the world, 
let me not mention Russia or things like that. I think that there is a lot of different volatility among many sectors. So you can buy those sectors that are pretty undervalued now. We have seen copper already going down from 320 to 2.5 per pound, which means that some copper assets must be undervalued. I don't know, London Man Mining has just increased its credit facility to do more acquisitions, which means that over the long term, they see the copper environment as undervalued. So you might want to diversify across various asset, crisis, asset classes. And then, of course, if you are a stock picker, then you dig deep and you try to find those investments that have great assets at a fair valuation. It's not just relative valuation, but absolute valuation. Khalid Adams, what could the Federal Reserve do to avoid a recession other than print money? Increase education productivity of people, but that's not on the agenda of any politician or any Federal Reserve. So they will do print money because to a man with a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. So that's what they are going to do. Will the USA see negative interest rates in the recession? That's possible depending on how the global finance flows work. If everybody is rushing towards US bonds on protection, then yields might go negative. If everybody rushes away from US as yields, yielding bonds, then uh, inflation might be positive and yields might not go below one. I see there are lots of comments. Thank you for the comments. Let me try to answer them. Alex Hill, in your opinion, is buying Bitcoin investment in the future or a purely speculative play? The same as gold, just cryptocurrency, so crypto not even tangible, so it's intangible. It's really based on sentiment. You really see the flow, how people are buying that or selling that. Uh, there is, there, it's just in the early stages, I think, of the situation. So it's a purely speculative play because you cannot lend it. There is no yield on it. So it's not yet an investment. Perhaps in the future it will be. For now, it's a speculative play. Samuel Ben Lewis asks, do you worry about gold derivatives spot price deviating from gold physical spot price? Oh, we are now entering into complex things about gold prices. I don't think this is where we want to go with this. But uh, actually, I don't know derivative prices and spot prices. How much are they devi deviating? I'm not a specialist on that. Cormac Lavell, hi Sven. Where do you think the demand for Bitcoin comes from? What percentage do you feel might be related to drag trafficking? I was teaching a few years, three, four years ago at the University of Amsterdam, and a lot of the students were very, very attracted from Bitcoin because it was independent, separated from institutions, separated from control. So I think it's, it's like when, some, when the price of the asset goes up, people are attracted. Everybody is attracted to something that goes up. When something goes down, it's panic, it's negative, people sell it. That's pure behavioral finance lesson 101, I would say. So if something goes up, people will rush towards it. If something goes down, people will be scared about it. And then there are always those triggers. How much, it's drug, how much it is drug trafficking? I really would not know. Martin Street from Sweden, greetings to Sweden. Do you have any particular comments regard, regarding Sweden? Sweden avoided the 2009 financial crisis, most indebted countries in the world. Would a big pub, public sector be a burden or a parachuting crisis? I'm really not familiar with Sweden to answer that question. Batman 911 just had a thought. Why are central bankers so famous now? Is in that a problem for society? Of course it is. Everything that we are basing our economy now is not productivity that much. It is financial engineering. If I can borrow at 0 0.8 negative interest rates and then produce cars like Mercedes-Benz can, then simply every investment, every rationale falls into water. It's unfair. It's uh, non 
competitive that you cannot compete with it. So it is thanks to the central banks. This economy stands as it does because of central bankers, and therefore they are famous. Unfortunately, they are notorious. A good, strong economy, you shouldn't even hear about central bankers and financial engineering. Alex Hill asks again, when should we look at small caps? You should always look at whatever opportunities are there to diversify your portfolio and then always not look at the relative basis. This should go up or this should go down. But five, find those businesses that have a good yield. If you find a good small cap that gives you 5% dividend yield on a price earnings ratio of 10, then you can expect that the long-term return will be 10% if there is some growth to attach to it, even higher, and in the meantime, you get a dividend of 5%. So that's how you have to look at it. You just have to pick the right ones and see how that goes. Khalid Adams, what other options does the Federal Reserve, other than print money, we already answered that, no other option. Video pot, if we inflate away our debt and we print our way out of a recession, doesn't gold go up along with the stock markets? Yes, it should go up, but then it is again, the risk is there. It might not be linear, it might not be as planned, it might go down first, and it depends on where is the level we are now. 1500 might be higher because when I looked at 50, 60 gold miners, I think it was in October 2018, there Mining costs go from 400 to 1,000, 1,200 for those very expensive miners in uh, South Africa, the deep, deep underground miners. So you see that when gold prices are higher, they will start increasing production and that oversupply might come at the wrong time, for example, in a negative period for gold, and then you have gold prices really go down to 1,000. So you have to be very, very ready for volatility there and play it on a rebalancing portfolio base, not betting your life savings on gold. Why there is no inflation despite so much money printed? That's an excellent question from Guntar Snemiro. Why do you think inflation will appear on the next printing sessions? It might happen, it might not happen. And why there is not so much inflation now? Because if I can borrow at 0% or negative, I can simply increase so much supply to fill the market, lower prices, and therefore we don't see inflation in the measured inflation as we see it, because you invest in farmland, you invest in uh, chickens, you invest in uh, production facilities and so, but we see inflation in asset prices and we see inflation in real estates that have a moat. How will US government get rid of the huge debt? It won't get rid of the huge debt, because it doesn't have to, they just need to service the debt. If there is a little bit of inflation, which there is 2% per year, it is enough to keep that debt growing, but revenues growing too. So there might be deficits higher or lower, but just a little bit of inflation, two years of five, 6% of inflation in a good environment. And the debt pile is suddenly much, much smaller. Technical analysis to value investments, Roel asks, not really related to a recession, but uh, if you can read those charts and you com complement it with value investing, even better. Acer, is China's economy on an upward trend while the US is in a downward trend? I think the US is a developed economy, so it's more difficult to grow. If you look from the base from where China started, 20 years ago, so we are here. Now China is here and the US is even higher. So it's just a thing about what you can really do versus comparing yourself. You shouldn't compare, you should try to focus on how can I improve the life of lives of my population, be it in the US, be it in China. Who cares who is the biggest economy or growing the fastest? The fastest China grows, the better it is for US people. The fastest US grows, the better is for people in China. So it's all connected and it should be, the focus should be on just improving the wealth and health of the populations, not who is number one.
Didi asks, why do you value capital intensive companies like Ryanair with net income? Capital expenditures are real expenses. Most businesses need CapEx and working capital to fund growth of, on your real yearly basis. Yes, but if you can borrow at 0%, then capital expenditures are what they are. You simply refinance them thanks to cheap European money. Gold is not inflation hedge. It means bonds are about to collapse like 13, 1931. I prefer businesses. Businesses, good businesses will not collapse. Bonds might collapse. Gold, you can't eat it. It doesn't pay a dividend. So it is what it is. John Hamlet asks, how do you make sense of bonds yielding negative? I don't make sense of that. Nobody makes sense of that. And it's financial engineering to the max. And we'll see how that goes. Do you think golden mining and silver mining stocks going higher? I did think that in 2018, 2017, and that's exactly what happened now. And now as stock prices of gold miners went higher, most of the ones I watched and I owned were up 50, 100%. Now it's riskier because intervention, things are changed. We are in a dynamic environment. The governments react to what's going on. Monetary policies react to what's going on. So we are in a reactive economy and therefore that poses a risk. Don't think that everything is in a linear way. What would you be long right now? Well, I'll tell you, I'm long uh, Russia, I'm long China, I'm long food in the US, for example. And I'm long commodities because the sector, some stocks in the sector were really, really hit hard. So, for example, if I'm long commodities, if they're inflation, I'm protected. If there is infrastructure building from monetary policy free fiscal deficits, then it should do well over the long term. And at the end, the laptop I'm using now, the mobile phone, the everything you are using, and it takes a lot of commodities. So if I buy low cost, low debt, uh, businesses that do well in any kind of business environment, then I'll do fine over the long term, especially if those are cheap. Now, how bad do you estimate the next recession will be? I don't know. Perhaps there won't be a recession. Let's take Germany. So the last quarter was down 0.1%. Two quarters ago, three quarters, we had another quarter down. Maybe the next quarter will be 0.2% down. So that's a recession. Two quarters of slowing economic growth, no economic growth. It's a recession. If that happens in Germany, people will still go to jobs. Given the stimulus, businesses will still go, still grow. If you need a job, go to Germany. If you're half smart, you'll find it and even if you don't speak German. So it might not be as bad as people expect, expect it. And if that happens also in the United States, unemployment, what happens if it goes from 3% to 4% at zero economic growth rate, it still might not be bad as people expect it. Our, our stock, Batman asks, are stock buybacks a Ponzi scheme? depending on what valuation. General Electric, I wrote in 2016 how I, I was against the stock buybacks they are doing. It's just a golden parachute for emails to retire rich and richer. And they were buying at market highs and they are not buying them now. And we see what has happened. With that cash, billions and billions, 40 billion spent on buybacks, they would have saved the company. When will the recession be officially announced? Nishant asks uh, two quarters of negative economic growth or economic contraction. Johnny Virus, April year 2000, one ounce of gold was 250. I think a lot of dollars are printed since then. And that's also a very good point, 250 to 1,500. So gold has already exploded. It was at 1,200, so five times. That's exactly the balance sheet increase of the Bank of Japan, Central European Bank. And so the question is how much higher it has and is it really the best hedge? What's happened when China falls economy collapsed, the same as the European falls economy or US? Gary Ramberg said, I admire your thoughts, but I disagree on gold. Since 1972, the annual rate of return average is 7.5% as of March 2019. Gold is the ultimate uncorrelated asset. 
uncorrelated asset. So you might not want to be 100% in gold. As you said, have a portfolio, part of your portfolio in gold. I have gold miners. I own, own two gold miners since a year ago, now in down to one. So I'm too exposed to gold, but put it in a right portfolio perspective in a portfolio of diversified asset classes that are have really uncorrelation. So it might go up, it might go down. I prefer miners that are a business, more risk, more volatility, but better to rebalance around those portfolios. Thank you, Hathor Brar. Thank you for the kind words. Buy 100 ounces of silver. Sven Karlin, what do you think of Sandstorm Gold? Um, when I looked at it, it was fairly priced. Probably the stock is now up since gold prices are up, so they made more money. They're making more, more money. Should you buy a second home to hedge against inflation? That's a very good point. If you can get a fixed interest rate, long-term mortgage, and have the cost of the mortgage be much below the cost of rent in a good environment where you are sure that you'll have a good return on the yield, there will be vacancies. If you can finance that, then it's actually a low risk, high reward investment because in 30 years, home prices will be uh, 10 times or five times what they are now. In 30 years, your fixed mortgage will be still the same and you'll be a happy champ. Trust me, I made money twice on such environments, inflationary environments, because sooner or later they happen. You just need two years of inflation of 10% and your mortgage will look like a crazy bargain. Uh, what's my favorite book on the shelf behind me? Well, The Almanac from Charlie Munger is really great. And uh, if you want different discussions, skin in the game, uh, Nicholas Nessin Pellet, uh, those who want to read my book, Modern Value in Investing, uh, Antifragile, Warren Buffett, Peter Lynch, I would advise everybody to read Peter Lynch's books before he, they start investing one up on Wall Street and beating the street, etc., etc. We can discuss books for years. Let's go back to inflation. Cavit emptor, of course, always can happen. Uh, U.S. finance and fitness, U.S.-China trade war is putting pressure on the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates. What? your prediction on the matter. Well, it's not, they are putting pressure with the economy, with everything. Everybody loves low interest rates. So if you can do that, be your guest. European, Europe has zero interest rates. So to compete, you have to lower because, and if you can lower without inflation, the better. Peter asks, Kyle Bass says that China is a bad investment and their banks will blow up in 18 months. Kyle Bass made a lot of money in 2007 betting it right. He was wrong on Greece. He was wrong on a few bets. But he might be wrong on this. He might be wrong. The thing is that if he's wrong, he loses little. That's how his strategies are positioned. If he's right, he wins big. And not everybody can do that correctly. So that's a very important thing to prepare those investments, those bets, so that a, you lose nothing if you're wrong. B, you win big if you're right. That's something you have to wrap your head around. It. Uh, view on Argentina. Uh, no idea. We will see what happens. It's a lot of negative sentiment now. Argentina is also a hedge against inflation because if there is inflation, uh, Argentina is mostly a commodity exporter, so they might do very, very well in case that happens. Mlytl, if I said that right, I'm seeing where currency hedged US Treasury bills have a lower effective yield than ever the equ equivalent hedged German or Spanish bond. Is this showing the effects of America's spendthrift ways? It could be, or it could be that European banks are simply printing so much money. Italy cannot have a 10-year bond and at 1%. That's simply crazy. Uh, Italians love if you want to give them money at 1%, but it's not an indication of quality. It's more an indication of stimulus and money printing. 
Alex Hill, Jobs for Financial Advisors Post-Technological Unemployment. Apparently, six-month three-year portfolio management is something robots can't do well. There will always be upgrades, no matter what happens. You have to program that those robots and people will not trust robots. So you'll have to be there and put your skin in the game. Where is it? Skin in the game and then you will have a job if you do that. If not, then it, you will do something else in your life. How do I feel about US steel companies? I didn't yet come to research the whole sector about steel. Um, I know yesterday there was a lot of discussion about nickel spiking up. So we need that increases the prices of steel and Indonesia ramping up a lot of production, steel production there thanks to their ferro-nickel ore that they will turn into steel directly at extremely low cost. So it is about cost, and I don't know what is the cost of producing steel in the US. A gold, silver go up, copper goes down, leading into recession. That's correct, John Hamlet, but it might revert at any point in time. You never know. Cobalt miners haven't looked at cobalt uh, because all were minor projects, so I didn't look at that. Best way to research small cap stocks, one by one, one by one. Put a list, take the Russell small cap 3000, go one by one, le learn about the businesses. And if you find 10 to invest over 10 years into them, you will be rich. Energy sector, defensive, it depends on the valuation. We bought a utility a year ago in Brazil, did really, really well because the valuation was crazily cheap. Makoa asks, as a small business owner in a lawn, lawn care businesses, is starting a used car dealership with excess a bad idea? No idea how, my, how good are you with car used cars. Contrarian expatriate, periodic recessions can be healthy for an economy. Why does the USA, USA have such a recession phobia? I completely agree with you, Contrarian. And recessions are healthy to weed out the bad businesses and to allow the good businesses to flourish. But every one percentage point of decline in economy kills thousands of people. We have all seen 2009 mortgages uh, can enter into a spiral. And therefore, they are trying to do whatever they can to postpone it. We don't know what will be the long term cost of this. Nobody knows. Politicians, monetary policies short-term mind that four to 10 years, you'll be dead. They're, most of them will be dead in 10 years. We younger people will pay the price of whatever their mistakes are. What's the true correct discount rate? What's your required return on investment? Yeah, if you use discount rate of zero, 1%, uh, valuations are infinite. So use something for comparison, find the, find the best comparisons, and that is it. Stefan says, how likely do you think a Japanese banking crisis is and how damaging could it be to the global economy? Don't know much about Japan banking, but they have so much money they print it. And if you need money, you print trillions of yens and everything is OK, like they have been doing lately. Eric Cope, you made a video around the New Year talking with a guest about Micron and you both painted the bearish picture. Since then, Monish Pabrai 13F has shown he has bought. Any change in your opinions? I didn't look at the sector of sem semis, uh, so Monish Pabrai might know much more than I do. The guest knew much more about that, explained the risk and reward. So he probably is calculating the cash flows and he knows that over the long term, he's happy with that. That's not my sector of competence. My guest was, and I didn't have him on the channel. He's making millions in China, doing business in China. So no matter what he's doing in the recession. I have been investing GLD, but now I'm learning that there is not real official verification of how much bullion is really owned by it. I'm now worried don't know if there is a Madoff setup. Do invest in, in spin-offs. If I can find cheap, good spin-offs, why not? For example, I looked recently at Livent, the lithium spin-off from FMC looks cheap now, even compared to declining lithium prices. So that's one to watch, for example. 
Emerging market most undervalued. Argentina is an emerging market extremely undervalued if things turn right. If not, you lose your money. If things turn right, you make five, ten times your money. So the risk re reward is positive. Uh, Russia is extremely cheap and China is still there. Good companies, growth companies with price earnings ratios of five. But you have to accept the volatility and uh, currency risk. Let's see a little bit more about the question, which secular trends are you mostly interested? Again, something that if there is a recession, where will the governments invest? They will invest in infrastructure. What do you need to build infrastructure? You need copper, you need batteries, you need solar, you need clean energy. We are in an electrification period. So I'm really thinking, okay, this could be a good time to invest in those things that have limited supply to get to copper, you need to go deeper, deeper to get to nickel. Uh, there is not cheap nickel around the world. So those might, might be a secular trend that I see going towards an electrified world as, as soon as the cost of doing that is cheaper than the cost of oil. And in the next five to 10 years, given the low interest rates now, it might actually happen. Silver up around 5% in USD. That's good. My miner that has also a lot of silver production will probably increase their cash flows. Bitcoins are already commented. Do you recommend hiding bitcoins or, uh, under the mattress? Uh, no, because it's not good for your back if you have too many of them. Interesting tip, use Thailand, to use in Thailand. It's a nice country, I hear, but I don't know about the economy. Probably see real estate prices there if they haven't spiked over the last years. Stocks in my portfolio already said Russia, commodities, uh, China, food, uh, US food for now, utilities, etc. I'd wait after recession to buy real estate since everything will be on discount. Logic. If you wait and there is inflation, home prices crashed in 2009, but those didn't crash in 2000, didn't crash in 1991, didn't crash in 1980 and something, 1970s, true recession. So just because those crashed in 2009 doesn't mean it will repeat itself. When buying home prices, rent, cost of mortgage, fixed mortgage, that there is your margin of safety, not in where the price is now in, com in comparison to where it has been. Thank you guys for the kind words. Thoughts on Uber stock? Didn't really analyze it. Uh, if they are still losing money, I don't know. But uh, WeWork and all those losing money companies are a big risk. I might do a video on WeWork and their community EBTDI, whatever that means. So don't get caught up in those fancy modern buzzwords that have absolutely no financial meaning. All right, China Communist Party is a cancer. Communism, of course, there are positive and negative sides to it. But what I'm worried about, I'm not living in China, what I'm worried about is the trajectory of the developed world, Europe and US, especially Europe. When you give zero negative interest rates to companies, you are practically bailing them out already. So you're also skewing the natural market forces, which might, which might also be a cancer uh, for many of us long term. So let's focus on our garden, on our home, and uh, we'll see what happens in China and in uh, the world. Thank you, Tom, for the kind words. Potato frogs, what are your favorite businesses Excellent question, especially related to recession. Favorite businesses are you make a business that makes 10x money, not in a recession, but still makes 2x money in a recession. Because when the recession passes, and it always passes, post nebula, phoenix, what the Latins say, you're back to 10 or even 15. And those are the kinds of businesses that you, if there is a recession, you simply buy more, you reinvest your dividends, you maximize your long-term returns for that. 928 laissez-faire, completely different environment than we are now. 
Sven, are you looking into frontier markets? Nigeria has a very low PE ratio. The place is a bit of a mess, but valuations look pretty fine. Not looking into Nigeria, I'm thinking if Africa ramps up over the next 10, 20 years, commodities will do very well. I have some miners that own some mines there, so that might be my exposure over the long term. Sil silver, my industrial cost on silver was 10, so silver will not probably fall thanks to industrial demand below 10, 8. If there is more demand as gold spikes up, as we have seen, even better. I am long uh, silver. Gary Ramberg, Sven, what about the increasing desire of other countries, including the EU, to use an alternative currency to trade and negate America's reserve currency status? We'll see about that currency also. The renminbi is getting stronger, but I would prefer to focus on assets, no matter where there are in, they are in the world. If you hold good assets, assets then you will do fine. Can you give me free money? Go ask the European Central Bank. They do that a lot. All right, Neiko Sorin, if I plan to sell that negative interest bond, when the interest will be more negative, it makes sense. If you're betting on lower interest rates, it makes uh, sense to buy long-term bonds. But then you are betting. What if it reverts against you? You have to be pretty well structured and hedged to do that. I'm shorting crude oil. Do you believe the world is in, in an everything bubble? Not everything. A lot of financial assets are, let's say, in a bubble relatively. But then again, it's about your required return on investments. <laughs> not going to ask the question, do I have pants on? What kind of recession question is that? It's not a recession, so I still haven't lost my pants. All right, let's see some other questions. Uh, where did we go? Bitcoin miners, okay. Non-correlated assets, Ray Dalio, all-weather portfolio. All-weather portfolio is very interesting, but the focus is not on maximizing returns. The focus is on limiting volatility. So if you focus on a long all-weather portfolio, you have to do the opposite. You have to buy gold when nobody wants it and sell part of it to rebalance your risk in your portfolio. That's a long-term story. And everybody is rushing now into the all-weather portfolio. You cannot just rush in. You build one over years and you balance it. It's simply a decision you have to make. Okay, I'll be all-weather for the next 40 years and then simply follow that. Uh, Mates Zgombic asks, how much more upside do you think gold and silver has it depends on what others do. It's really a bet, not a prediction. Real estate is sliding down the red hole. Uh, markdowns and foreclosures popping up. That's interesting. Of course, real estate prices can go lower, but an investment in real estate is about limiting your downside with a fixed interest mortgage rate and a margin, margin of safety towards the rent you are renting it out or living into it. And that's something you never know how much, how lower it will go, a little bit of inflation, it turns up, etc., etc. Is Trump going to take back to a gold standard? No, never. He needs currency debasement to finance all his spending. China needs Hong Kong in order for their economy to function, function and a crisis in Hong Kong can lead to a Chinese economic meltdown. Well, there are always these inputs about something, something someday will lead into a meltdown or crisis that will have to be saved, but you never know what. Victor Scott asks, what is the negative interest rate effect to pension seeking yield? Would they go to emerging markets? It's actually, they are increasing their risk to reach those promises of 7% that is really crazy. So pension funds and the liabilities that are piling there are a big risk long-term and we'll see 
about that in the future. It's really difficult to see where it goes now. Roel, Sven's research platform is the best hedge against inflation. Perhaps not a hedge, it won't be linear, but long term it might maximize investment returns. So I'm ready to take a hit into a recession, but I know that when the recession turns, as it always does, I'll be much higher than the starting point. So it's not about hedging, it's about accepting volatility. Timing the market is what it's very, is very different, difficult. So, video pot I heard you say is that central banks will print our way out of economic issues. Also heard you're not sure what to make of negative rates. So you're positive based on extending the experiment. I don't want to try to look smart. I want to make money and be protected. They are going to extend the experiment, no matter what, whether we think it's smart or not. I'm not a central banker. I'm just a private investor who wants to protect himself and make money in the process. I think it's wrong to assume, okay, I'm the smartest guy in the room. I think it's better to think, okay, how will they think and then adjust our moves to how they think. And I think they will solve problems with a hammer because their problem is a nail and that's it. Will we see deflation prior to inflation like the rest recession? Impossible to know. Maybe we'll see immediately the inflation, deflation. That, that is betting. That's not really crude oil, higher or lower. Again, impossible to predict. If I would be able to predict crude, I would be a crude trader and I would be making billion. I would be already retired 20, 50 years ago before I was born. Peter, Berkshire, post Buffett, Berkshire talking about recession, 25% in cash plus huge credit capacity. So uh, they are prepared for whatever and they are a financial fortress. If you want to protect yourself, you might think about having financial fortresses in your portfolio. Uranium market, we have looked at it. I think there are a few videos on YouTube 10 months ago, something like that. If you just Google Sven Carlin and Uranium, you'll find them. There is a bullish thesis and a bearish thesis. And it's about how much supply can come to the markets from Kazatom, from those um, the Canadian mine. So it's a pretty tricky investment. Now I look at them in low prices, and I will have to look at them again to ref refurbish my knowledge. What about passive investors? Will they be hurt when... Markets reverse and start declining. Passive investors should invest blindly each month an amount into the market and reinvest those dividends. Actually, a market crash would be excellent for them because those reinvested dividends and new investments will be at a higher yield, leading to higher long-term uh, rewards. Do you follow Nickel? Yes, Norris Nickel. I have been long for a long now time. It, it's a good company paying now 10 10% dividend is 15, 20% on my entry point. So thank you, Noriel Snickle. Should you leverage yourself by taking a 2% loan for 10 years and invest? If you can take a 2% loan for 10 years and invest it at a fixed rate, not variable, at a fixed rate, you might think about hedging yourself by doing that. If 20 years, even better. Shell, Chicago, are you surprised that the bull market has run as long as it has? What would end the current bull market run? Excellent question. A recession, uh, inability of monetary policies to control the market might end it. And uh, the question is really uh, fear, speculation, but then also delayed intervention, political pressures, populism saying, let's not save the rich guys' asses like we did in 2009. Let's focus on poor people. And that's something that is a risk. And Ray Dalio has of, often been thinking about it. Shiny X, do you factor in the political risks, right? As I was just saying, rise of nationalism and uh, pitchforks after years of wage stagnation. The wealth gap is getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. With free money, those that have money and access to money are getting richer, richer, and richer, while the wages of the lower classes stay low. And this is something that might 
be a big risk with higher taxes, higher taxes, boom, stock market down as when Trump came into power, lower taxes, stock market up. So that is a very, very good risk to discuss and think about it. Top five things you look for in emerging market stocks, cost of production, competitiveness, uh, cash per share, dividends, and moats, and uh, long-term outlooks, and past management quality. And if you look at that, it's rare, but sometimes you find them. Do you think for the past 10 years we went sideways, have been a recession this whole time? Economic growth is very, very low. So it might be engineered to the maximum. It's about productivity. And with aging demographics, you cannot really increase productivity because you need improvements. And therefore, it's, uh, I would even say, yes, the economies are not growing because it's a slowdown, aging economies, and it's difficult to, to plan and protect. Oh, I see now I've been talking for 55 minutes now. Thank you for watching. Let's do a few more questions and then we'll call it a day. Deutsche Bank Finance and Fitness heard rumors they are, in, they are struggling in major deep. What is your opinion on the euro area and the Italian government crisis? Well, my opinion, I'm half Italian, so Italy without a government crisis would not be Italy. But they have the euro, and the euro is saving their asses because they can borrow at 1%. And as long as they can borrow at 1%, everything will be fine. But when they lower that, when people don't trust them anymore, then things might change. Is the global slowing down going to cause a housing issue in Hong Kong and Australia? Everybody's saying that the market is really in a bubble there, so that might be hit hard. And we'll see if it will contage other parts, but it's always about valuation. If you can rent out a house and get just a 2% yield, that's risky. When I was buying my last property, the yield on the price versus rent was 8%. That's huge. The rent was 60% above my mortgage cost. So that's really a margin of safety. If rents are below mortgage costs, that's a bubble for me. Is silver set to break out short-term betting? Uh, so it's going up. If it's going up and more people take, a, take notice of it, there might be a boom. So uh, possible. We never know. That's betting. That's not investing. Which one will go down first, US, Europe or China, Europe, I think? is the risky play here, especially if we have political skirmishes, etc. Because U US is always US, China is just starting and have more leverage power. And that depends on what the market thinks. If the market says, okay, Europe is doomed, let's go to China and US, and you have Asia going to China, but we'll see, perhaps nobody will go down. It's very interesting, Remimbi, Euro, Dollar. Finance as a career, learn, 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 get a job, start learning, and uh, that's it. And you'll end up well. Just enjoy it and uh, learn the process. Jackie Chan, if the value of the pound is undervalued due to Brexit, should I prefer to invest in the UK due to currency? You're investing in currencies or businesses? If you buy businesses, then it's a different story. But they have cost their global businesses, so you have to see... Many UK businesses are global businesses, not that much exposed to currency. Are you long the Swiss franc? I don't do currencies, I do businesses. And that's something, again, to research and discuss how the Swiss are printing fran francs and buying assets. Extremely smart for Swiss, Swiss people, of course. International collapse. I don't know if it will come, and I don't know if it will affect Sweden or Australia or whatever country, depending on where we all are. Market re favorite resources. Uh, I love to research, to read the research reports that have a an deep analysis, not really that much the news. Space Dragon, is India a place to look during this period? Indian stocks were very expensive a year, two years ago, and now they are cheaper. So it might, uh, might be good to look at that. 
Bitcoin and crypto assets, we answered that at the beginning of the video. If you could talk to Ben Graham today, what would you ask him? Well, I think that uh, I would ask him how to buy assets, how to buy more assets when there is a recession or a crisis or a special uh, dip in the sector. How to be fearful when others are, uh, how to be greedy when others are fearful. Negative housing rates, Fed will not know. I don't expect linearity in whatever is going on. So uh, it might not happen. It might happen. We will see in the future. Still long Argentina with part of the portfolio. It's a risk reward play. I invest in stock market or in stocks that mine precious metals. So I have both businesses or that are diversified miners that have both silver and other mines. So if silver goes up, that is the protection. If silver goes down and other metals go up, that's the protection. So you're practically hedged. There are a few miners that do that. All right, price of silver or oil price. I would love to give myself a contrarian view. It's now clear how, how so many PhDs missed the last recession. It's not about missing the recession by being a PhD. Nobody can time a recession. And there are a lot of PhD that's got the 2011, 2013, 15, 17, 18, 19 recessions that didn't happen. So that's always about timing. It's about investing in assets. I'm not trying to be smart. I'm just saying that what the most expects I would say it's not the largest probability. Whatever happens, nobody knows. I don't see the future. Precious metals in a recession, don't know. Books recommending. I think it's very important to read books that show what's go on, going on with the, over the long term so that you see how things probably will evolve in the future. I have eight holdings in my portfolio and I think it's too much. I should bring it down to five over the long term. How to stay in shape? I don't know, eat healthy, exercise a little bit, not enough. Latin America, it was very cheap a year ago. Now it's a bit more expensive. So thank you all for watching. It's an hour now, let's uh, call it a day. I uh, really enjoyed this uh, live Q&A. We might do it more often. And uh, well, thank you. Please subscribe to Real Vision and please subscribe to my channel for more updates on what's going on on the market, on the business environment. And uh, really, thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.